I wanted to talk about some estimation models in Gretel, which um, some people may not be familiar with, but may find useful. And what I'm talking about is limited dependent variable models. So I've already loaded the Gretel screen, and I have some other videos that show you how to load Gretel and how to get data. I actually, I'll mention this data set in a minute. But if you wanted to run a regression, often you hit model, and there are a number of different estimators here. Ordinary least squares being probably the most common to use. Well, there's a class of models referred to as limited dependent variable models. And you can see they list them here. Logit, Probit, Tobit, named after um, Nobel Prize winning economist James Tobin. Hecate, named after um, another Nobel Prize winning economist James Heckman. And what these are is they are models or to estimate when we have a limited dependent variable. What do I mean by that? I mean, for example, normally we're estimating, for example, um, earnings as a dependent variable and factors like education and age and experience as the independent variables. But in this case, we want to have um, and also when we estimate models, sometimes we put dummy variables as an independent variable, like a 0, 1 for gender. So we can see if women earn less than men, if there's a difference between the earnings of men and women. Now, in this case, we have the 0, 1 variable over on the dependent side, the Y variable. So that might be the case of bankrupt or not bankrupt. So one if bankrupt, zero if not. Um, we might have it for finds a job it equals one, doesn't find a job equals zero, or we could do it the other way around. So, you know, sometimes you have a dependent variable that's just binary, zero or one, or has limited ranges. Okay, I'm just going to talk about the um, binary version. So here I've grabbed some data and I've mentioned this before, that in the case of um, Gretel, they actually have some data sets that are available. So you go to File, Data, Sample File, and you can actually download some of these data sets that come from some of the popular econometrics textbooks. I happen to grab the one from Woolrich, which happens to have one on affairs. And if you look at the data here, they, they have a, a variable equals one if the person is male. They have the age and years, the years married. Um, religion. Five is somebody who considers themselves very religious. Um, one is equal to somebody who's sort of anti-religion. Um, years of schooling. Okay, They have number of affairs, so that wouldn't be a limited dependent variable because there's sort of no limit to how many affairs you can have. But maybe you're more interested in, in just whether a person had an affair or not. Maybe you want to analyze uh, future partners. And, you know, you know, having one affair is just as bad as having ten affairs. So the, in this case, the variable is one if the person had an affair and zero if they did not. So we can estimate these models. Instead of running a regression, we can use something like Logit. All right, and we can choose binary choice, and you put the data in the same way you normally would. So for a fair, we're going to put that in as the dependent variable. And we're going to put in some independent variables. I've already put these in here. Um, the zero one for male, you may think males are more likely to have um, affairs. The amount of education somebody has, how religious they view themselves, and how many years they're married. So those, those seem like sort of reasonable variables there. You know, perhaps um, marrying someone who's better educated would be less likely to have an affair. Marrying somebody who's more religious would be less likely to have an affair. And then you just hit OK, and you get the, the estimates here. And what do we find? We find that the male dummy variable is not significant. So it seems that men are no more likely statistically here, to have affairs than females. Education is not statistically significant. So somebody who's better educated is not necessarily less likely to have an affair. But here, 
Uh, these are interesting, these last two variables. The more religious somebody viewed themselves, the higher number they gave themselves, the less likely they were to have an affair. Okay, So if you're looking for somebody who's less likely to cheat on you, you might like to choose someone who ha who's more religious. And the number of years of marriage. Okay, As the number of years goes up, um, the likelihood of an affair goes up, and that is also statistically significant. And I guess that's not really surprising. So here we use the logit model, and we could also use the probit model. And the difference is, is the different functions they use. The probit model, so we're going to use the same regressors, and we'll have the same dependent variable. And we get, you know, very similar results, right? Um, the two that were not significant are still not significant. The two that were significant are significant and with the same signs as well. And pretty close to the same t, uh, z values. So why not just run a regression? Well, the problem with running a regression is the dependent variable can really only take on values of 0 or 1. And you're not looking for, so if you get an estimated value of 1.5 or negative 3, that doesn't make any sense. Because really you're looking for the probability that someone will have an affair. So in this case, um, we use uh, probability functions. Okay, The probit uses the standard normal cumulative density function, where the logit model uses the logistic um, statistical function. So what those do is they are probability functions and they have values ranging from 0, not at all, no probability, to 1. So that makes a lot more sense in terms of estimating the model. And again you can use this for um, bankruptcy studies you know, so you might put, you know, 0 or 1 for um, the dependent variable, 1 being bankrupt, and you might put different accounting measures or profitability measures as independent variables. So this is a really interesting or powerful tool that uh, that Gretel has in it and something that um, people, you know, many people who don't do high-tech econometrics oftentimes aren't um, aware of.